CIA operatives FDR and Tuck are best friends and partners. I trust you. I know that you would take a bullet for me. I would for you as well. But their bond is put to the test when they both fall for Lauren. You just let her decide. May the best man win. The two turn their deadly skills against each other in an all-out battle for Lauren's love in This Means War. Leah, Sean, you both have just seen it. Sean, why don't you tell us about it? So This Means War has a, a, a funny premise where these two CIA agents fall in love with the same woman and they play this sort of game of one-upmanship to see which guy's gonna get the girl. It's a very chaotic situation, but it provides for a few laughs here and there. I really surprisingly enjoyed this film. I had no interest at all whatsoever in going to see this film. I'm not a fan of romantic comedies. And I think that one of the reasons that I really enjoyed this film is because the fact that the, the center of the story is really about these two guys who are like homeboys. They're like, they're brothers, they have each other's backs. And now what do they do when a woman comes in between the two of them, mm -hmm. right? So they have to now outsmart and outdo each other. And the title of the film is a complete pop cultural reference hearkening all the way back to the Bugs Bunny, Warner Brother cartoon days where Bugs is into it with Wile E. Coyote or the Road Runner. This means war! But there are a whole lot of other pop cultural references going on in this film. There's a, there's a spy versus spy element going on that came from Mad Magazine. Mad Magazine, thank you very much. Certainly they're savvy about this Bugs Bunny idea because it's kind of cartoonish, the whole middle plot of the film with this these two guys. But that's one of the major criticisms I have about this because the Bugs Bunny cartoons are very funny, but they're all of five minutes long, eight minutes long. This Means War is 98 minutes long, so there's a lot of repetition here. Yes. You could get in and out of this movie in probably 60 minutes or less, but they have to extend it to a full 90 minute plot in order to have a movie, and it just kind of runs out of steam. They've got to add in a villain that the two guys are going after just to keep the script padded with something to go to. I agree that there is a sustained one note joke going on here. But for me, I was willing to forgive a lot of that, mostly because of the look of the film, the pace and the energy of the film, the action that is peppered throughout the film. They don't really know what to do with the end. They just resolve both plot lines in too pat and in too neat a way. And it's all predictable. There's not really any major sense of suspense which guy she's gonna choose. Not at all. But they plant enough seeds to where you know this is the choice that makes the most sense and the other guy is gonna be okay. If you can't be refreshing, if you're gonna be derivative, at least be clever or be funny and in the process of doing that. And I felt like the filmmakers were able to deliver on that. It's fun when Reese Witherspoon will say something like, oh, Tom Hardy's too safe. So what does Tom Hardy do? He's gotta go out and play paintball with Reese Witherspoon. Yeah, how does that make you feel? Like if our nation gets attacked by random paintball people, I'll be safe. Sa safe. I, I tried to get your back there. I, I, I got off a few shots, but then I, I think my triggering mechanism. Oh, oh my God! Are you okay? What about the acting? There's not a whole lot of range in terms of what they're being asked to do. The script doesn't demand it. We know that these actors have the capacity to do this. You can look at Reese Witherspoon's earlier work, and you know that she can go far and wide if she needs to. But this, the script doesn't really demand it. We know that Tom Hardy can deliver a wide-ranging performance. He's done that with two films from last year, specifically Warrior and Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. So we know that these, these actors can do it. They're asked to perform very narrow characters. They do a fine job of it. And Chris Pine and Tom Hardy have good chemistry here. You believe their friendship, you believe what ingrains them to each other and why they would seek out to one-up the other one. Reese Witherspoon is playing Reese Witherspoon. She's got nothing to play with other than her own screen persona. She's charming in the sense of you like Reese Witherspoon. And she's a good enough catalyst for these two guys to play off of. McGee, who's a really high profile director, directed this film. What did you think he brought to this movie? Well, McGee falls in, I guess, the good try category for me. <laughs> I haven't really liked any of his movies, but I thought all of them had a few oh, things that he brought to Oh, you didn't like Charlie's Angels? I, I was not a fan of the Charlie's oh. Angels movies, but he does a fine job. He's got a script. There's nothing terribly interesting about the script. It hits all the beats it needs to. He injects enough energy to get by. What he brings in terms of energy and pace and rhythm and tone, he 
sacrifices in subtlety, mm. nuance, depth. <laughs> there, he doesn't traffic in that area very much at all. And that allows him to get away with a lot of stuff. There's plot holes all over the place in this movie. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but at least Mick G has answered for us the age old question, what would happen if Captain Kirk and Bane fought over June Carter Cash? <laughs> this means war. The war is more predictable than chaotic, but it has enough charms to warrant an evening on the couch. Stream it. This Means War is a funny, action-packed, 98-minute popcorn movie of boys behaving badly. I say see it. Your votes add up to one and a half tickets, which is a see it for This Means War. Cheers. Cheers. You do realize, of course, This Means War.